So what is the best camera for YouTube this year when it comes to price and features? In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing my top picks for every budget coming up. Hey, what's up guys, Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of tips and strategy videos, as well as tech gear reviews, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, check out show notes and links in the YouTube description below. I'll list out all of the cameras that I talk about, as well as show notes and anything else I forget. Let's jump into the video. So when it comes to picking out the best camera for YouTube, one of the most important questions to ask is what are you actually gonna be using the camera for? You know, there's a lot of videos out on the subject and a lot of people have different opinions, but it's usually wrapped around their own bias and what they do. You know, if you're an indie filmmaker, then the GH5 might be the camera that you wanna go for, but the GH5 is not the best camera necessarily for everybody, especially if you just wanna make simple YouTube videos. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down different categories, like the best camera for vlogging, the best budget camera, the best budget 4K camera, and then talk about the right camera, hopefully, so that you can be connected with your actual needs, the practicality of what you're actually gonna be using it for, so you don't have features you don't need or a camera that's too complex to even actually get videos done. So saying that, let's jump into topic number one, and that is the best camera for vlogging. Now when I say vlogging, what I mean is turning on a camera, probably holding it up and narrating your day, walking around, vlogging, right? And for vlogging, I think it comes down between the G7X, the Canon G7X, and the Sony RX100. Now there's a couple different versions of each of them, and here's why I think it's the best. Uh, first of all, I think the G7X is best for most people. It's one of the most popular vlogging cameras. And the reason I would say it's the best is because you get a flip screen, so you can film yourself in selfie. It's got good autofocus. It's very easy to use and it also takes great photos. If you want just a point and shoot camera like this that makes great videos and great for vlogging, the G7X is the way to go. $500 is about the Mark I version, which is super solid, and about $680 here in the US for the Mark II version, and so a super solid camera. The only reason I would recommend the Sony RX5 is this model, it is $1,000, so it's almost double the price of this one, and I don't believe you get double the performance, but the RX105 is more for somebody who wants more features. Um, the G7X doesn't do 4K, but I don't think most people need 4K. But if you wanna be able to shoot in flat color profiles, do a little bit more creative type of work, and especially shoot in 4K video, then the Sony RX105 is definitely the way to go, but it also is quite a bit more expensive. So check out these quick examples of video footage from the G7X versus the Sony RX100 Mark V. All right, you are seeing the G7X Mark I right now. Everything is set to auto, including auto white balance. There is a $75 Studio Pro lighting kit right here. And we're also gonna be upscaling this footage to 4K. So depending on what you're watching on YouTube, if it's set to 4K, this is 1080p footage from the Canon G7X Mark I. And one of the things I love about this camera is it does a great job of tracking autofocus on your face. And so I have that going right now. And so let's now check out the Sony RX100 5. All right, now you are seeing the Sony RX100 Mark V. Now keep in mind, this is definitely a good image, it's a great camera, but this camera costs double as much as the G7X Mark I that you just saw. And it boasts a ton more features, but it might be overkill for a lot of people. Also keep in mind that this is a 4K video clip at 4K, and the last one was 1080 up processed. And then one other thing to say is that all of these tests that we're doing are not meant to be an in-depth scientific comparison. I just wanna give you a quick side-by-side -side comparison, kind of in this environment, so you can just compare each of these cameras and get an idea about them. But if you really want to you know, go deeper with any one of these cameras, I definitely recommend looking around for other example footage because there's so many variables that go into it. Different cameras perform different in different lighting settings. You know, even the user could have different settings. We're trying to do everything auto to just give you a vibe of what comes straight out of the camera. But again, this is the Sony RX100 Mark V. 
Category number two is the best camera for basic YouTube videos. Now what I mean is videos like this, one where maybe you wanna sit in an office, you wanna, you're in your bedroom, and you wanna create YouTube content, you want it to look awesome, maybe you wanna shoot some B-roll and even shoot some photos and do some social media content, but you're not trying to make indie films, you're doing a lot of content that's kind of talking head, and even maybe beyond that, but you're not wanting to color grade your footage and get super fancy, you just wanna get content out to the world. And so for this category, what I would recommend is any Canon camera with dual pixel autofocus. And we'll actually put a list of them up here on the screen, but these are cameras like the Canon 70D, the Canon SL2, also even mirrorless cameras like the M6, the 80D, the T7i. And the reason these are all so great is because they have flip screens to go to selfie. Um, they have microphone input so you can get better audio and they're very, very easy to use, which I think can serve the widest group of people. And dual pixel autofocus is the game changer. It's one of the most, probably the best autofocus systems on the market. Sony is definitely a competitor there, but a lot of people still rate Canon's autofocus as unparalleled. And so it's a camera that you can simply set up, turn on, tap your face, and record incredible content, but in a very user-friendly way, where you don't need a ton of extra features. And so one of the downsides to a lot of these Canon cameras is they don't have 4K, but I don't think that's something that the average YouTuber, person that wants to create YouTube content needs. And so when you pick up one of these cameras, you basically have everything in an easy to use package. And the standout for me this year is the Canon SL2. And the reason why is because these cameras, uh, the dual pixel autofocus cameras range from anywhere from around $500 up to about $1,300. But Canon recently released the SL2, which is pretty incredible because it's a very small DSLR. I mean, if you compare this camera to the 70D, you can actually see that they've shaved quite a bit of size off it and a ton of weight. The thing is almost weightless. You still get your flip screen and you get the same sensor that is in the Canon 80D. So even the $1,400 camera uh, that's out there, you can get the same video quality out of the camera. You get the mic input, and you also have new features like a faster processor, time-lapse modes built right into the camera. And I mentioned you know, the G7X and RX100 for vlogging, but even this camera is phenomenal for vlogging because you can get the flip screen, but it also is much lighter than some of the other Canon DSLRs. You can put a mic on there if you want. And the SL2, the body alone, is only $550 as a new camera. That'll probably go down as it's been out for a while, just like other cameras camera prices do. And so again, for the average basic YouTube you know, creator that just wants a camera that works, that's easy to use, that will get your, you know, will always have you in focus, I think that any of the cameras with dual pixel autofocus are a great bet. All right, now you're seeing the Canon SL2 and you're hearing the audio right off the camera. This is a handheld shot auto pretty much everything, auto uh, white balance. And then remember, this camera has a mic input, so you can always level up the audio with a microphone. And again, it has really good autofocus, so I have it set to face tracking, so it's tracking my face and it's seeing it really good as I can view myself on the LCD monitor. But let's actually check out the 70D, which is a much more expensive camera that has a similar sensor to see if the footage looks any different. Okay, now this is the Canon 70D with the same Canon kit lens. You're hearing the audio right off of the camera. And this camera has definitely a bigger and better build quality, but it's also a lot heavier. And when it comes to the video quality, we don't really notice a huge difference, right? Because the sensors are really the same or very similar. And so you're still seeing this. Um, there's, some, there's image stabilization on this lens, so that helps with shake a little bit, but this is handheld. And I'm in the same lighting environment with auto everything on the Canon 70D. And lastly, all of the dual pixel autofocus DSLRs are gonna look similar. So what you saw in the SL2 and what you're seeing right now, this is kind of the image that you're going to be getting with a T7i, a 70-70, D, an 80D. Sure, there's going to be differences, but this Canon image is uh, basically going to be the same throughout those models. And then also keep in mind that for these cameras, we are up processing the 1080p footage to 4K because they don't have 4K built into them.
And one of the other things that I love about the SL2 and also some of the other newer Canon cameras like the T7i and the 77D is they've included a beginner mode. And so it's kind of cool because if you are more advanced, you can just turn it off. But if you're just getting into video, these are my top recommended cameras because that beginner mode is gonna help you start creating content right away without getting stuck in the complexity that some cameras cause because of not knowing how to use them. So it's something definitely to check out if you're shopping for someone or you're just getting started yourself and you want a camera that'll help you get the best results. Category number three is the best budget 4K cameras for creating YouTube videos. So if you're watching this video and you've decided you have to have 4K, but maybe you don't have a huge budget to invest, then look no further than the Panasonic G7. This is a very popular camera because it has a lot of features. It's got a flip screen, which a lot of YouTubers want to selfie mode. Of course, it's interchangeable lenses and you get that 4K video resolution. It's got a mic input and so you can have that pro audio and it is a phenomenal camera. The one downside to the G7 is that the autofocus is pretty terrible during video mode. Now keep in mind that plenty of YouTubers have been making great videos with cameras that didn't have very good autofocus during video. But one of the reasons why it's such an important thing to me is because with the people I coach, the people I work with, and even personally, I think most people don't wanna become like fancy video shooters. They just wanna share the content and they want simple equipment that works without having to worry about it. And so when you don't have that autofocus during video, you can do a whole shoot and be like, oh crap, like I was out of focus and the background was in focus. And you know, you could see it. Sometimes we've had some issues where it's doing face tracking. We think it's tracking the face but things are just not in focus. This is less of an issue if you're using the camera for video production and not as much on yourself as a solo shooter. And there's plenty of people, again, who can get around it. What most people do is you just get everything in focus and then you just flip it to manual mode so the camera isn't hunting for focus. So I don't really wanna put the camera down, but that is for me why I don't recommend it to most people who want something that's super user friendly where you don't have to tweak too much to make sure that everything looks right. And from here, a newer version of this came out called the G85 that leveled up some more pro features. Now, this one, again, can come in at around $600 or cheaper if you shop around. So it's definitely probably the best budget 4K camera. The G85 jumps up to about $1,000, but added things like in-body image stabilization, which is one of my new favorite features of cameras. A lot of Sony has it. Five axis in-body image stabilization which starts allowing for very smooth handheld footage and can really help smoothing out vlog footage as well. But again, it's a little more expensive. So definitely check out the G7 or the G85. And the one other camera I'd recommend for creating 4K content for YouTube is the Sony A6500. Now this has become a main shooter here at Think Media TV. We shot all of NAB show here in Vegas. It was a tech conference with this camera. And I love it because it has great autofocus. The two brands that have really solid autofocus are Sony and Canon. They're kind of head to head with really good autofocus. So you know that you can be um, always tack sharp. Things will always look right. Um, you don't find it hunting for focus like a lot of the Panasonic cameras do or even other brands. Um, and it's a super solid camera that also has in-body image stabilization and that can shoot 4K video. And when we wanted to move to 4K, this was the camera that we picked out. The one downside to the 6500 is that it actually has been overheating on us a little bit, but we use this cage, and once you put this around here, it dissipates the heat and seems to solve that problem. And it also doesn't have a selfie screen. And so if you shoot by yourself, you shoot in like your home office, your bedroom, that might be something you want so that you can easily set things up. And so I feel like in the next version, if Sony adds that flip screen to selfie that the, and it maybe deals with the overheating issue that they might have one of the most lethal best cameras all around on their hands. But meanwhile, the 6500 is definitely a good choice, especially if you want to start putting out 4k content. 
Okay, now you are seeing the Panasonic G7. And by the way, watch till the end of the video because we'll actually put all the cameras talked about side by side so you can compare the uh, footage in a different setting than this one. But what you're seeing right here is 4K footage right out of the Panasonic G7. This is gonna look pretty similar to probably what the G85 looks like, but you also are just gonna have a few more features in that camera. But for 500, around $500 to pick up the G7, it is definitely a great budget 4K camera. Um, and you're also seeing a little bit of face tracking, so I'm not sure how good the autofocus is doing, but I love the fact that it does have a flip screen to selfie, so I can see the shot composition. So again, this is the Panasonic G7. The audio is right off the camera, and it's shot in 4K. Okay, so now you are seeing the Sony A6500. Now, keep in mind that this is not the kit lens. This is actually a wide angle lens, the 10 to 18, which is a great lens for vlogging. But the problem with this camera is it does not have a flip screen, so I can't see myself right now. So shot composition is pretty much left up to your intuition. Not necessarily a problem, it's something you can get used to. You're also hearing the audio directly off of this camera, but it does have a mic input, so you could always add a mic to this camera and we are shooting in 4k and so this is a 4k image and if you want to scale up on YouTube to see it in 4k you can do that all right the next category is the best camera for indie filmmakers on YouTube and for me I think that comes down to either the Panasonic GH5 or the Sony a7s mark II. Now, these two cameras are incredible for having tons of features that support the needs of people who wanna make short films, indie films, do a lot of color grading, shoot a lot of like uncompressed, high bitrate footage so that they can get the most uh, detail out of their footage. And to be honest though, this is a smaller segment of kind of the overall YouTube market. It is an incredible camera. I love it because of dual SD card slots. It's great because it does have a screen that flips to selfie. You've got a mic input, you've got a headphone jack, you've got features stacked to the moon. Like, this camera is really a marvel in, in shooting content. It's also something that we like to use for long form content, whether if I'm speaking at like a seminar or a conference, because there's no record limit, dual SD card slots. Theoretically, I have a, I have a power cable that plugs into the battery and you could actually alternate the SD card slots theoretically infinitely as far as record time. So it is a very amazing tool for creating content, but it's also $2,000 just for the body, and it's overkill and a little complex for the average YouTuber. And so if it's something that you already know about, well then you're already probably somebody that this might be a good camera for, but most people I think it'd be overkill and there has been a lot of issues with the autofocus, which makes it less than ideal for being a solo shooter and just flipping the screen on yourself and wanting to just get that face tracking, solid, no hunting for focus. One of the things that makes it that way is the fact that the focus is contrast based and that Sony and Canon's focus is phase detection. And those are just some fancy words that you don't really need to know, but there is a reason why the autofocus kind of falls short. But this is an amazing camera. I'm not gonna talk too much more about it. We'll link it up on the YouTube card of a video where we went, a whole playlist where we went more in, deep, in depth with the GH5. If you're somebody who wants that like, really advanced set feature set, definitely check this out. And then also the A7S Mark II. That body comes in around $2,400, but is incredible in low light. Lots of indie filmmakers are using it to make some incredible work. But this video is more about the practical everyday YouTuber. So that brings us to our final category. But I wanna mention that every camera in this video is super solid. I don't think you'd be disappointed with any of them. But if you asked me, Sean, what is your personal pick, your top favorite this year? These are the two that I would recommend. The first is the Sony A6500. Despite a few issues, this camera is very amazing and it's become our really daily shooter here at Think Media TV for one reason, and that was we wanted to go to 4K. And leading up to NAB this year, we did a ton of research, a lot of debating, really between this camera 
or the GH5. And the reason we picked pick the A6500 is because of the great autofocus. Of course, the 4K is beautiful. There's a lot of frame rate comparisons between them. But when it came to run and gun, having a small portable camera that produces a great image and can ultimately get us that 4K result, this was our choice. Now, I don't know if this is the right camera for a lot of people because again, the body comes in at $1,400, which leads me to my number one pick for the best camera for YouTube for the majority majority of people. Again, keep in mind, I'm thinking about price here, I'm thinking about how user-friendly it is, and I'm thinking about how many features you get packed in for the investment. And for me, my top pick is the Canon SL2, or again, any of those newer Canon cameras with dual pixel autofocus. The funny thing is that a lot of them are pretty similar, and it's just small different features that they have. But the reason the SL2 stands out to me is because this body costs only $550 here in the US for everything that you get. The flip screen, 1080p, 60 frames per second video, a microphone input, and you basically get the same sensor inside of here as the $1,400 Canon 80D. So the kind of picture and image that comes out of the camera is absolutely amazing. And what tops it all off is that it's super user friendly and dependable. You know, one of the things I've noticed with Canon cameras is there's not overheating issues, is there's not weird, you know, quirky camera turns off where it has these other challenges. Now, I think those are things you can live through, but what I love about Canon the most is that it just works out of the box and it's easy to learn and easy to start creating content. And I think that that is the most important thing. We're talking about the best camera for YouTube, but ultimately the camera is not the most important part of YouTube. It's not the production value that is the most important, it's the content value. And what I love about Canon is they make it easy for the camera to almost disappear so that you can create your videos. You want it to turn on, you wanna flip the screen open, you want things to look good, be in focus, the colors to look good, and you want it to work every time. And so that's why I'd recommend this camera, plus the affordability makes it incredible. And one other thing to say about Canon is also that the lens selection is unparalleled. And so you can get a ton of different lenses that will make this camera look amazing, but even some very budget lenses. And as we compare to other brands, whether it's Sony or Panasonic, they actually don't even have as many offerings for very affordable killer lenses, which we have a video about, by the way, we'll link it up on the YouTube card in the description below, on the best budget Canon lenses. And so when I think about someone wanting to create YouTube content, investing in a camera like the SL2 or the 80D or the 77D or the T7i, as well as some lighting and a microphone, you've got the ultimate YouTube studio for what the average person needs for just creating great, great, content. Okay, so now let's jump into a side-by-side -side of all of the different footage, clip after clip, starting with the Canon G7X Mark I. Now, one thing to note about the footage during the earlier clips is that a lot of it didn't have really good color skin tones, and it was probably the light kit that we were using. It made things a little bit cold, and so keep in mind that you can always adjust the white balance. So right now, we're just sitting in front of a window, so this is just natural window light, and everything is still pretty much set to auto, as it's gonna be for the rest of these clips. And so right now you're seeing the G7X Mark I auto white balance. I'm sitting just in my office. There's no extra lighting besides daytime and sitting in front of a window. Now you are seeing the Sony RX100 Mark V in 4K. Now you are seeing the Canon 70D at 1080p scaled up to 4K. And this is gonna look very similar to a lot of the Canon DSLR footage. Of course, all the settings, including the white balance, is on auto. All right, now you are seeing the Canon Rebel SL2, and keep in mind, this is 1080p footage scaled up to 4K. This is the Panasonic G7 camera, gonna look very similar to the G85. You're seeing 4K footage right now, all settings on auto, and all natural light. 
Okay, now you are seeing the Sony A6500, a great 4K image. This is not a kit lens, this is actually the 10 to 18 lens, but I zoomed it in to 18, so it'd be a similar shot composition to some of the other video clips. Again, this is all natural lighting, pretty much all auto settings and auto white balance. And this is the only camera that is in this video that doesn't have a flip out screen to selfie, but one hack to get around that is by using a mirror. That's how I just figured out the shot composition here and so a great camera with a great picture which brings us to the question of the day and that is what camera do you think is the best camera for YouTube and why I know there's a lot of good reasons out there maybe even some cameras I didn't recommend so I'd love to hear from you in the comment section and remember that some of the best tips and feedback come from you the think media community so definitely connect with everybody in the comment section so thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe for more videos just like this. If you wanna watch another Think Media video, check it out here. And if you wanna see a playlist of the best mics, lighting, and gear that I would recommend to accessorize your camera, you can watch that right here. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.